Welcome to the Unlock Podcast, an innovative approach to human development. My name is Amanda, and today I am joined by Angelo Derlopas, one of our associate coach here at Unlock. Angelo, can you please um, introduce yourself very briefly? Thank you very much, Amanda, for having me. That's right. Uh, and I'm an associate with Unlock, so I work a lot with humanitarian organizations in the private sector. Actually, my background was very early on with working for private sector. My, my academic studies include an MBA and a master's in psychology. For the last 14 years, I am a coach, uh, a coach ed educator and uh, a mentor and a supervisor. And um, I have a uh, the, the, the NCC credentials, I have been accredited by the International Coaching Federation as a master certified coach with a with an advanced certification in team coaching. And um, I'm also accredited as supervisor by the European and Mentoring Coaching Council. So thank you very much for having me here. Yeah, thank you for letting, you know, us invite you and being part of this amazing journey that we're kind of starting, you know. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about learning culture. <laughs> That's why you're our guest today, because you are a person that has vast experience on what learning culture are, especially within organizations, especially within the corporate sector. So let's just start by that, um, addressing that question. What is a learning culture? You're right. And uh, learning culture is very important for the organizations. And uh, the trick about the learning culture is when people think that they have a learning culture, but they somehow keep on resisting. Uh, of course, there is a whole uh, there is different. There are different kinds of learnings and different kind of skills, the horizontal and the vertical skills. What we are mainly working on uh, it are the skills that include, uh, to say it simply, communication skills, active listening, problem solving, teamwork, uh, everything that uh, can contribute to have people skills. Because uh, when people are managers and, and leaders on uh, various levels, uh, what they need are the uh, capacity the and the understanding of how to handle people and um, in many ways, that goes through understanding how to handle their own self. So self-awareness is very, very important. Now, uh, there are different approaches about what is important in learning. And if we go back to the theory of appreciative inquiry, for example, uh, you can, that allow us to make a distinction between what we use to think about what is important about learning and um, to say it, to put it very simply, because I think that's important for our viewers and listeners, is that um, there are people who think that uh, the best investment they can do is to educate or train people in things that they don't know, uh, something or to close a gap, for example, which is not bad per se. But I think it's also very important, and we have found that through the appreciative inquiry, that understanding not just what our the, the, um, the growth opportunities or the development needs, the way that we are calling them today. Uh, it's also important to understand which are the strengths of the people in the organization and invest on those strengths because this is where uh, the organization will have the, the competitive advantage and build on that. And uh, that's, um, in, in, in brief, that's what, what it means to uh, make good use of the resources of the organization to invest in the right people and retain the talents in the organization. Invest more in them. However, if you want to look at what uh, recent uh, researches and theories have shown us, and I'm naming uh, Professor Carl Dweck and her mindset theory, uh, which uh, talks about the, the growth mindset and the fixed mindset. Um, it's not just about people. It's also about the organization, about the, the environment, the working environment. What do the people in the workplace, and when I say people, I mean the leaders, the managers, uh, what is the culture that they are um, having or allowing or um, enabling? Is it a culture that uh, um, allows people to have a fixed mindset, which means that there are, there's a limited number of things that a person can uh, uh, do or learn, or there's a limit to where that person can grow or is it unlimited? Now, the growth mindset 
shows us shows us that uh, if the right environment is in place, if the right people can model the growth mindset, if they can inspire the growth mindset, then people will feel it's natural and organic to always strive to learn more and to become better, to become more and um, learn more things and outgrow themselves and become always better being the forever seeker, let's say. And uh, that allows for a lot of learning opportunities. And learning can come from both the training, as we know it uh, traditionally, what everyone can think about what training is, but also about coaching, which is uh, in, in a lot of uh, instances, and we have the experience in, in Unlock as well, we complement uh, training with coaching. And I think for a good reason, because it has been proven that the, uh, the, the value of training is being increased by a great percentage if coaching will be applied at some point of this trajectory. Uh, uh, and it makes sense if you think about um, the that the uh, let's say the trainee or the coachee, the client in general, will understand what are his or hers um, individual obstacles, what uh, she he needs to overcome, what to do differently, and what particularly they, uh, they need to do in particular in their workplace, uh, working uh, with their specific issues challenges, people, and departments, and so on. Uh, so it's more about, also about customizing, but it's, on the other hand, you know, Amanda, what is, what is even more important is that it, uh, and it creates that space safe for reflection to understand uh, how people can um, grow, uh, how uh, in which direction they should develop their, their, themselves and their people so they can become better in what they're doing and, um, and make good use of all the learning that's being provided. Uh, now, I don't know how much time do we have because I know time flies. Uh, I have more questions. That's a thing. But from everything that you said, which was so gracious, um, I'm kind of connecting this to an episode that we did um, a couple of months ago where we addressed psychological safety. So one of the things that you mentioned for you to be able to well, enable a workplace where people feel comfortable, uh, enabling this culture, you know, where you feel like you can go to someone, you can speak up, you can have certain behaviors. It, it means that the place, like in order to enable a learning that a proper or a higher learning culture, you have to enable as well a psychological safety place in the first place. Yes, that's one of the, the, of the themes that we, we are working on, especially when we are working with leaders, creating an environment that provides, creates a, a psychological safety so can, people can trust that they can uh, speak up and be heard and uh, share genuinely and sometimes challenge uh, ideas for the sake of creating or co-creating new and better ideas uh, so that uh, we ha can have the best teamwork that it's possible and that so that people can uh, will not be very uh, will not be afraid to try out new things and um, yes that's right psychological safety is one of the things the growth mindset is also very, very important. Conscious leadership, there are so many things that are very, very important. And, um, you know, I was thinking about 10 years ago, uh, if someone would come to the workplace and said, um, you are not being vulnerable enough. If that had happened 10 years ago, then everybody would have looked as if that person uh is not in the right place. Um, Ten years ago, vulnerability was considered as as a weakness, as um, as a sin, as something to be blamed of. But now it's even been uh, um, yeah. People consider that even in uh, appraisals that you have to be vulnerable enough in order to allow learning to happen. What? Yeah. Yeah, that is that is actually the best take there. You know that you have to allow yourself to be as vulnerable as possible you know, and, and able to be, you know, capable to embody this learning culture that you're trying to promote as well. So what are 
or, or what examples can you give me of like traditional corporate learning cultural environment? Uh, I remember an example that uh, was shared by Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella in a in a conference by uh, the Swift organization, and uh, he was explaining how he implemented uh, Carl Dweck's theory in Microsoft, and uh, it. I think this is a great example coming from a big uh, corporation, uh, but uh, it, it shows uh, uh, the difference in culture. And uh, I remember that uh, Satya Nadella said a lot, uh, a lot of things uh, in that interview. But I want to uh, what I want to bring here in this podcast is that at some point he expressed that in uh, his managers, and uh, he ex- he explained the value of the growth mindset. And uh, some of his managers at some point came back to him and said, "Satya, we have found which are the ones that have fixed mindset." You know like finger pointing and he said back to them this is not that's not the way to go forward now these are my words of course but uh, he meant that um, that's not the issue here it's not about finding who who among us or among the people here in the organization have fixed mindsets it's about enabling everybody to um, move to a growth mindset so it's about so the responsibility lies between us. Yeah, that's a, that's such a good takeaway because indeed you have to be aligned in order to promote, you know, a, a same culture within an ecosystem. So how can you, or how would you, more, more suddenly, so how would you um, disrupt years of like perpetuating the same uh, learning culture? Like if you're doing like a new client, let's say like, like kind of like a case study question this related, right? So how could you disrupt like years of perpetuating the same learning culture? What are, what are your your steps or approaches that you would take? Well, one way to challenge that is uh, talk to the person who is in, uh, of course, making the decisions and says, okay, so you, we, we always take it for granted. And I think it makes sense that uh, every organization has finite, uh, finite uh, resources. So what's the best way to uh, make good use of the resource that you have available? Would you uh, put your money and your hours into people just for fixing let's say the holes, or do you want to invest that in people that you believe or in the parts of the people in that, uh, uh, in the, in the strengths that people have rather than the weakness. So I think that's a, sh- that's a, a game changer. And if you ask that question, uh, the, the person in charge, I think they have to, to make a, a tough call, but I think it's it's a good one that will lead the organization forward. Yeah, because in a sense, you're also making them responsible for the change that they want to enable. So once they're conscious, like you you were mentioning, you know, self awareness is very important in order to promote um, a cohesive learning culture. So making them aware or making them you know write it write down whatever's wrong or whatever needs to work uh, better for the company or for the organization is the way to move forward. So in that sense, you need some alignment and you need also the compromise from, yeah, the head of the program, let's let's call them. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so how would you, um, how can you both as a leader and as a team member, how could you like be a better, uh, be a better like team member in the sense of like promoting a learning culture when you're like undergoing the, well, the, 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 the change, let's say. Uh, Modeling, being uh, leading is about modeling the uh, what's the right behavior, what's the right attitude. I remember, uh, now this is my personal experience. I remember at, at some point I was uh, coaching a number of leaders in a big organization. And uh, of course, everybody, well, there was a schedule. But however, the CEO learned that I was there and he asked to meet me. And he wanted a session with me. And I think that I think that's a great example showing exactly that. I think that kind of leader, that kind of CEO was inspiring everybody else. It's like giving permission to do that. When for those who might be hesitant, he was kind of given permission. I did not ask that. I did not ask for that. But he wanted to do that. And that was great. Yeah, that that is great indeed. It's like um, there's a quote that I that I really enjoy, which is, uh, you know, to lead by being, you know, just don't don't be like leading people and, and, and just, you know, follow me and do as I say, but, you know, do as they should be doing and then they will follow because they feel like if you if you trust this, they will trust you. You know, they already put their trust on you. So that's that's a way that they can feel inspired and feel, you know, like 
motivated and, and compromised in the sense that, you know, if he did it or he, she did it, if they did it, I can do it as well. And I should be doing it because why not? You know? It can be. So, you put it perfectly. I couldn't say it better. Well, I'm glad I could add something there because <laughs> this has just been great. So would you like to add some experience that you would have uh, related to uh, learning culture within organizations, personal or not? Just some experience that you could share that's relevant to what, what we are discussing here today. Well, uh, apart from uh, that example that came from my experience and uh, the other one from Microsoft that came from uh, some other <laughs> experience, uh, I think there are things that are happening all the time. When we're working with leaders, there are things that are happening all the time. And uh, um, I can see that there are people who are, um, are so, some of them are so inspired to uh, work for their own personal change. And so, mm -hmm. for example, uh, I cannot disclose the organization, but for example, last, and it was a very senior person, last week, uh, somebody said, okay, so drill me. And he wanted he wanted me to ask all the, the hard questions, be challenging, uh, being very deeply reflective and um, even heretic, uh, if that is allowed to ask all the questions that he didn't have the opportunity, the time, the place, the safety to consider and ask and uh, no answer and being asked to answer an answer and I think and I think that's great people like that or people for example I remember another example of a person who was also a very senior um, a few months ago he was coming so well prepared for our conversations he really was doing you know uh, all his let's say homework and more and he was so intentional and determined and i think intentionality is very important in, a, in the work that we do people are get will get the best outcome from their efforts if they are intentional in what they are doing and we are there to partner with them of course that is that is really really insightful you know like the actual commitment to act on what you think and what you say and how you uh, portray a situation is actually it takes it takes some courage so i really really feel honored to have you here and to have you share these experiences that are both personal and other experiences as well you know from senior leaders that feel uh either confident or not don't feel confident you know to address some situations and then you you create that safe space for them to also you know enable them to have that conversation that will be tough at the beginning but i mean it's it, the only way to go over it is through it right so so it's kind of how to address the conversation so um thank you very much for all this would you like to share something additional with our listeners thank you very much for thank you very much for having me and i'm grateful for this uh, i think the better i think what's most important for our listeners is to remember that uh the intention is very important and to have a as clear goal as it as as it can be realistically speaking but i think uh personal professional development is very very important so there are always new um horizons to reach and uh, the belief i think they should have a strong belief that uh, this is doable they can do that uh the training and coaching is the way to go forward if they have the intention and they will find the time and they will do it for sure well thank you so much for kind of summarizing everything that we just uh, talked about today um so yeah so Important words, you know, self-awareness, growth mindset, commitment, uh, leading by example would be another good phrase there. Um, but thank you so much for your time, Angelus. I really appreciate you taking your time to, you know, educate us a little bit on, on this topic that actually affects every single organization. Thank you very much, Amanda. Yeah, thank you. So if you want more information, you can always find us at unlock.org. U-N-L-O-Q dot O-R-G. And uh, to our listeners and washers, you know, our viewers, sorry. Uh, thank you for listening, for tuning in, and stay tuned as we continue to unlock human potential.